Hi there, this is Elise Benin, your marketing mentor. And this is the podcast for you if and only if you are ready to leave the feast or famine syndrome behind, and I mean for good. If the mere mention of another meeting makes you shiver, this one is for you. Just because someone suggests a meeting, even if it's a client paying you tons of money, doesn't mean you have to say yes. In one of my recent coaching group meetings, mm -hmm, one member was fretting about having so many meetings she couldn't get her actual work done. And that led to a lively discussion in which we have uncovered all sorts of other issues from time management problems and boundary challenges to questions about how to lead a meeting and why it's a really good idea. Because the reality is that as a self-employed person, your time is precious and it is your own. That means you get to decide which meetings to have, how long they last, and how to run them so as not to waste everyone's time, especially yours. So listen and learn. Too many meetings? I have some ideas. If you're overwhelmed by meetings or tired of being a therapist or a mediator, or maybe you're allergic to meetings for meetings sake or meetings without agendas or people who talk, 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 or maybe you're just sick of getting stuck in meetings, emerging hours later and having your whole day derailed. Do meetings often feel like a waste of time? And are you at the point where the mere mention of meetings make you shiver? Of almost everyone I know, I'm one of the few who loves meetings. It seems like with vague agendas, too many talkers, and people who don't pay attention to the clock, meetings can go down the drain and take your creative spirit with them. But as one of my clients and fellow meeting fans said, a meeting can be much more efficient and a better and more complete way to get your questions answered instead of exchanging a bunch of emails back and forth. The truth is I do love meetings and I'm hopeful that you can too, because I want everyone to get the good from meetings, connecting and learning something new and leave the bad behind. And as always, I have quite a few suggestions on how to do that with the language to go along with it. So first, we want to get some clarity. Have you ever actually looked at how many meetings you have, all the different types, and if they're working for you? Let's take an inventory of the different types of meetings you may do. First, there are meetings with clients. They could be progress meetings, project management meetings, and check-ins. Then there are meetings with prospects or potential clients. And then there are networking meetings. And then there are meetings with collaborators. And there are video meetings and phone meetings and in-person meetings of all different varieties. Are some more important than others? Do they fill you up in different ways, whether financially, emotionally, socially, or other? Which ones leave you feeling inspired? Which ones leave you energized? Which ones leave you informed? And which ones invoke a sense of dread? It is an important emotion to pay attention to because dread can be your body's way of saying something isn't working here, whether it's the client or the format or the feeling that your boundaries have been pushed. Tune into what's not working. Is it the person, the format, the time of day? Do clients show up unprepared or while they're still hashing things out? I know I do. Do agendas and schedules fall to the wayside or is it just your precious time being overburdened or wasted? Since you are in charge of what meetings you take, and you are, consider this. What is necessary? What is desired? What meetings are worth it to you? And here, worth is determined by a number of different factors beyond just money. We are humans. Sometimes it's nice to talk, but not if our schedules are maxed to the brim, we're overworked, overtired, or we haven't had time to eat or take care of ourselves. So just because someone asks for a meeting, you don't have to say yes. Why? 
because it's your business and you are in charge. You get to be selective. Whether your workload doesn't allow it or you're trying to be especially mindful of who, what and who you commit to, saying no really is always a viable option. So try this. You could say, thank you for the invitation, but unfortunately I have other pressing commitments this week. If there are any critical points or updates, please feel free to share them with me via email after your meeting. Or you could say, my week is booked. Can you send me your request via email and I will let you know if I have any questions. Or you can say, our web designer has the necessary expertise, so I'll let them take care of this and I'm confident they'll handle it effectively. And just because you do decide to have a meeting, it doesn't mean it's a free for all, right? Back before I got fired from my second job, that was 36 years ago, I used to have to go to meetings I wasn't in charge of. Sometimes I pretended I was. That didn't work out so well. (laughs) Maybe you also worked for someone else in the past and you were a captive meeting attendee too, but now we are the bosses, y'all. It's your business and you get to decide. And I mean that, yes, even if your client is paying you tons of money, you get to decide. So when someone asks for a meeting, don't respond right away. Take a moment to think. Take a day to think if you need it. If this meeting is necessary and something you want to say yes to, then consider the parameters that will work for you. This really can look like whatever you want. So try this. You could say, I'd love to have a quick meeting, but I have a hard stop after 20 minutes. Or I can't do another Zoom meeting this week. I have major screen fatigue. Can we just talk on the phone? I do that a lot. I would love to meet about this, but I'm not available until, and then you give them your availability. Or you say, Wednesday or Thursday before 2 p.m. is best for me. After that, my brain turns to mush. That's a real one from my dear friend, Deidre. Maybe some of your meetings are operating from the perspective we once had when we were on the inside, that meetings can or should happen anytime and for a long time. Or maybe it's part of the company culture to show up unprepared and hash things out and spend the whole day doing that. You can show them differently. And that's fine. They can do whatever they want on their own time, but you get to own your schedule. Now, while it's happening, you want to keep the meeting on track. So you, in real time, can make any meeting better. And at the very least, stay true to the comfort level and parameters you've defined for your own involvement. Up front, be very clear about what your goals are and what your time frame is. Then, Put yourself in charge of making those things happen. And if the meeting starts to derail, then help the non-clock attuned people stay on course. You could say something like, let's do a time check. We've got 30 minutes left. I do that all the time. People appreciate it and encourage the people who aren't talking. Maureen, we haven't heard from you. What's your take on this? Or politely interrupt the people who won't stop talking and bring them back on course. I say. I'm going to interrupt you now because we have more to cover. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, even though talkers have told me often that they appreciate someone stopping them, they sometimes can't stop themselves. But you might also consider a virtual integration for Zoom they call the talking stick, which encourages fair and intentional communication among participants. And it's, it's not something they made up. It's just like the instrument of indigenous democracy used by various indigenous communities. Pace it and police it. You could say something like, it looks like we're getting into the weeds here. Let's see if we can come to a conclusion in the next two minutes because we'll be moving on. I said something kind of like that today, in fact. In a recent meeting about how to have better meetings, One client suggested playing the Oscars wrap-up music towards the end of the meeting. I kind of like that idea. But don't get stuck. You can also excuse yourself if the client is figuring out something internally that they should have figured out before the meeting. If it was defined in advance what this meeting was about and the client hasn't shown up prepared, try this. Say, I understand that there are some internal matters you need to sort out before we can effectively address the purpose of this meeting. To respect everyone's time and ensure we can have a productive discussion, I suggest we reschedule for a later date when you've had a chance to finalize those details. Please let me know your availability and we can find a suitable time to reconvene. 
or something simpler. Sounds like that needs more discussion. Maybe you can take that and decide amongst yourselves and let me know what you decide. And in the meantime, let's move on to the next topic. Or if the meeting is breaching its schedule, you can say, sorry, I've only got 10 more minutes. Here's what I'd like to do before we go. If the meeting goes over, you can choose to stay or you can choose to leave. But keep in mind that leaving on time at the time you designated at the beginning is a really good way to demonstrate your boundaries for next time when it's likely the attendees will take your timeline more seriously. Now let's talk about after the meeting because efficiency is everything here. If recapping needs to happen or some kind of follow-up, do it right away. Waiting even a day or two can make you miss things because they're not fresh in your mind anymore. So allow time for yourself to take notes and send the follow-up while the conversation is still fresh. This also puts an official pin in the meeting and frees up your brain power. And then see how technology can help. Some clients like using otter.ai, which uses an AI meeting assistant to transcribe meetings in real time. I personally prefer just taking notes of the highlights because writing helps me process and retain the important details. And in advance, big picture, right? You're allowed to create some guideposts around meetings. You're in charge of how many meetings you take and how long they last. Pay attention to the rhythm that is most supportive. For example, If your mornings are best spent working or writing, take meetings only in the afternoons. Of course, all rules can be bent under exceptional circumstances, but spend some time thinking about how and when and with whom you'd like to have meetings in the future and have a policy around meetings or a framework that feels good to you. If you use Calendly or some other scheduling app, it can help you implement these regulations. You could limit meetings to two days a week or only take meetings in the mornings or adjust how you organize your schedule around meetings. So maybe after every meeting, you schedule a 20 minute meditation, whatever works for you. I have clients who only do meetings on certain days of the week, some who are game for an in-person meeting, especially when there's food and drink, and some who only do Zoom because they don't see travel time as an efficient use of their own time. I personally have been putting 15 minutes of padding in between each of my meetings, and it makes a world of difference. I just sit and think, I process what I heard, I make connections between the different ideas, and I let the ideas come back to me. It really does improve my headspace and, even more important, the quality of the services and the mentoring and the coaching that I deliver. Remember, you are allowed to be as conventional or unconventional as you want. There's an article called The Secret Power of the Eight-Minute Phone Call from the New York Times that really stuck with me. I'll link to it. It combines two things I adore, connecting and clear boundaries. It suggests that you schedule a 22-minute meeting where you'll discuss two main questions, no more. And you have a challenge, get a meeting done in under an hour and everyone gets lunch, so a reward. Or you can opt for walk and talks so you can move your body while meeting. And that actually is a really good idea. It gets your ideas flowing. And you can have a no agenda, no meeting rule. And if they don't bring the agenda, then you do. But if no agenda, no meeting. I want you to become a meeting maestro. With clients, that means you define in advance how meetings will look over the course of a project. With prospects, you choose a time where you feel energized, but the meeting doesn't take away from your most creative or productive time during the day. With colleagues, you can have those meetings only if they fuel you and don't if they don't. And with friends and acquaintances, and of course, dogs, you want to find a way to have in-person time because breathing the fresh air together can be good for the soul. As much meeting as we're doing online, we also do need in-person connection and fresh air, or sometimes coffee, or snacks, or chocolate. Maybe I love meetings because of how I wrangle my schedule, which I've been honing since a podcast from ages ago with my dear friend Deidre that I will also link to. I stumbled upon it recently and I 
got a good chuckle. But I encourage you to own your schedule and wrangle it however you see fit. Because when it comes to meetings and really everything else you use your precious time on, don't forget it's really precious. Think about what you want and what you need and whittle away everything else. Maybe Slow Productivity, the new book by Cal Newport, is really the best kind. Sometimes the answer may be saying no, taking on less, and truly prioritizing the clients and the projects that provide for the business and the life we want. As marketing mentor, I officially bestow upon you the esteemed title of meeting maestro. May your meetings be productive, efficient, and free from time-wasting trivialities. As meeting maestro, you shall make it so. So what have you learned about meetings? Take a moment to synthesize, to let it digest in you. Are there meetings you love and meetings you hate? What has shaped the way you engage in meetings and how you feel about your meetings? Have you taken any measures that improved your feelings around meetings? Feel free to reach out and let me know. We could even meet about it. I can tell you that the discussion about meetings made for a very productive meeting. So I hope the ideas are helpful for you too. And if you want to build a thriving business on your own terms, the first step is to sign up for my quick tips at marketing-mentortips.com. Once you're on the site, you'll find lots more resources, including my simplest marketing plan. So enjoy, and I'll see you next time.